whenever you're looking at tracks in the winter time, when you see snowshoe hare, you're almost guaranteed to see some fox uh, not, not far away. Is the snowshoe hare all white? In the winter it is, yes. so it, uh, it's the main difference between that and our long-eared rabbit in the park. So it, uh, it changes its plumage in the winter, so it sheds its, uh, its summer fur, which is typically brown, and then it'll um, grow back a warmer and um, more of a camouflage coat. So they're actually very hard to spot in the winter time, um, just because they're all white. Like, they really do blend in. So. Are these the, the hair? These are the snowshoe hairs, yeah, and you can sort of see some of their tracks behind yeah. me here. So they're, they, they look exactly like two little snowshoes in the back, yeah. um, and then you'll just sort of see a little dot at the front, and that's sort of where they rest the their paw. front paws, yeah. Uh, and up here, almost creating a sort of nest-like structure, and this is actually um, caused by black bears crawling up the tree and feasting on acorns, and in, in, do, in the process, they sort of move the branches towards them. And so it creates this little nest. Now they don't they don't raise any young in these nests or anything like that, but it just sort of looks like they've created, they've built a nest. Um, and that's basically due to them just gorging on acorns right before heading into hibernation. So this was probably from a couple of years ago. We haven't had a great acorn crop for at least two years. So who knows what uh, what next year will bring, but, um, but this is just sort of the remnants of something from a couple of years ago. So you can just imagine a bear sort of just sitting up on the tops of that trees. It's hard to imagine because we think of them as these giant creatures, but they're actually pretty much the size of a dog um, and uh, they can make it all the way up there without any issues. So that's, uh, that's what that little mess up there is, thanks to a black bear. So. You can see a stand of uh, beech trees here and that's um, typically a bear's number one food source. Um, so they'll eat the nuts uh, and quite often actually they will climb up the tree make a nest in the top of the tree, gouge themselves, gorge themselves on nuts, and uh, and then uh, if you're lucky enough, and we can t take a look, but sometimes you'll actually see their claw marks in the beech tree. It's a very smooth bark, so it's uh, very easy to spot any disturbances in them. This one is uh, pretty old, probably 70 or 80 years old. Um, so this tree, um, and trees like it, were probably um, the most logged tree when Algonquin Park was sort of first discovered. Um, lots of these trees were 300, 400 years old, couldn't even put three people around it, they were huge. Um, not many of those exist left today, but, uh, but this is a pretty good sized one, like I said, about 70 or 80 years old. This tree was actually hit by lightning. So on the side here, you can sort of see all the way up um, where the lightning struck, right near the top, and how it moved down towards the ground. Uh, but the tree still managed to survive, um, and uh, we were lucky that it wasn't during a dry spell, uh, just because um, it could have had a forest fire, but it looks like uh, you know, it was able to survive all right with uh, the amount of moisture that was in it. So, Can you tell me what tree it is in again, please? Uh, this is a white pine tree, the official tree of Ontario. Mm -hmm.